Okay, I do want to try something I've never tried before. Ooh, the Kinect is actually working. And that's looking at my MacBook display <laughs> from giant perspective of my A-frame room. Wow. This has been one of the most conflicting uh, devices that I've actually ever owned. But my history with VR goes way back. My first VR headset I bought when I was about 14 years old after selling a bunch of questionable super CDs on eBay, I was able to afford a headset that I used to just basically watch movies on, which is sort of the best thing that this is good for right now. But as a professional photographer, I've always been interested in where VR could fit into my productivity workflow. I just finished editing a full wedding that we'll look through real quick uh, using only the Apple Vision Pro. And I decided to dive in with about a thousand photos from a full wedding gallery just to see if I was noticing any tendencies to shift my color or exposure in a way that uh, you know looks wrong when I am viewing the photos on my phone or my laptop screen. But just so you have some idea of where I'm coming from, I have owned, uh, I don't know, probably a dozen different VR headsets going all the way back to the original Oculus from Kickstarter, uh, which was the company that Facebook slash Meta acquired to now release their more popular known Quest and uh, Quest Pro lineups and all of that. Uh, I still have a lot of those headsets that I've been comparing this to. And one thing that caught my attention, I thought I had decided to send the Apple Vision Pro back because I was getting a lot of eye strain and actual headaches, which I never, ever get headaches. It's very rare for me to get a, a headache. Uh, it was clearly, uh, this is the only thing that had changed in my daily life that I was doing. Uh, because of those, I was like, I don't think I could see this, you know, for hours while I'm editing a wedding or what have you. I'm just gonna send it back. But what I did realize, once I got past the headache factor, uh, I think mostly due to eye strain and just the overall weight of this, I watched my first full movie on this. And no other VR headset, even if the quality is, is kind of decent on a lot of them, and to be honest, it really is. No other headset was compelling enough for me to actually sit down and watch a full length movie. And I've watched about seven or eight on the Apple Vision Pro at this point, which is uh, saying something. But after that very first movie, uh, I decided to really give it a, another try, uh, another few days, uh, see if it got more comfortable and I was used to wearing it and maybe I could put different straps on and what have you. And uh, yeah, I did get more comfortable, like more used to wearing it for sure. And I also got used to the uh, overall operating system. There's some weird kind of quirks with it. One thing to keep in mind, if you have, everybody keeps saying watch Disney Plus, but I own like 900 movies and probably 60 of them are already in 3D. So I was already watching 3D movies and having a pretty good experience. Uh, the 3D effect has never appealed to me. And uh, through the Apple Vision Pro is the first time I've watched a 3D movie and thought, oh, this feels very natural and makes sense. Uh, but I will say, if you use the Disney Plus app, there's something in the streaming. I don't know if it was just a software glitch on my side, but something in the fact that it's being streamed. When you look around, the exposure and light sort of flickers uh, in a way that I don't notice for my, you know, personally owned 3D movies. So just a slight tip to keep in mind if you've been noticing that in the uh, Disney Plus app. But it was odd. I found myself looking for reasons to not want to keep this, to say this wasn't ready for prime time or it wasn't going to be useful. And the more I kept looking for those reasons, the more I realized I was watching another movie or I was finishing editing a full gallery. One other slight quirk that I found really cool is that your iPhone uh, Face ID will actually work with this on. I have a feeling it's once you've logged in with the pin code on the Apple Vision Pro, it then is authenticated with your eyes and so will unlock your iPhone. It's kind of funny to think that Apple may have added the virtual eyes on front of this uh, when you're you know, looking through the pass-through uh, so that Face ID could somehow scan your face. I don't know if that's true, but uh, it's kind of cool that it actually works. It's also a testament to the pass-through feature, though I'm pretty disappointed with how it looks compared to what Apple showed in their marketing. It is good enough that you can actually use your phone and read your phone through the pass-through cameras on the Apple Vision Pro, which is really cool. Using a web browser was the most glitchy experience, mostly because I would have to like look slightly above whatever hyperlink I want to click on for it to really latch on compared to the rest of the OS where that didn't seem to be a problem at all. I'm sure issues like that will just get worked out in software since it is pretty much just a software related thing. All of that doesn't even matter. Once I realized that you can use the uh, screen share with mouse and keyboard share the way that you can between Mac OS and an iPad with the um, extended display on your Apple Vision Pro, uh, it made life a lot 
easier. To actually be able to use the Apple Vision Pro interface with your trackpad uh, was very, very natural and fluid for productivity. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put these on and pull up the wedding that I edited. I'll also say, other reviewers have pointed this out, but the, uh, the strap adjustment knob uh, to tighten and loosen this thing is absolutely uh, a work of art as far as engineering goes, in my opinion. Okay, so additional issue number one, you can see the projected screen here is kind of hazy, and that's because I was holding the, the Apple Vision Pro with my hands. And so uh, thankfully being a photographer, I have a ton of uh, really high quality lens cloths that I can wipe that down, but it is kind of frustrating how often things that have a little bit of fuzz or, or haze to them from your fingerprints. And it's also tough to know whether it's the exterior cameras or the interior lenses that are doing that. Um, I will say connecting to the MacBook Pro has been a little bit of a buggy experience. It's supposed to auto detect when your computer is right there in front of you and then just float a little thing above it that says, would you like to connect? Uh, more commonly, I have to go over here and get a screen mirroring and then it is always detected as a thing. Maybe that's something weird with my configuration or what have you. Um, but yeah, it seems to reliably work once that is actually uh, done. I am now connected to my MacBook Pro and I should be able to... Yeah, okay, pinch and hold the screen. Now, one thing I've noticed uh, for me that it's annoying to not be able to tilt the screen uh, and rotate it in a way that uh, is always comfortable to my neck. And what I actually have to do sometimes is, is hold it and while pinching, look down and almost rotate it down and then let go so that the screen has a slight downward tilt that I really prefer. And yeah, at the end of the day, I'm just gonna say it. The color and exposure quality uh, editing on this is spot on. It is really, really, really good. But where I will say the Apple Vision Pro lacks is in brightness. Uh, also in movie watching. I think there's a reason uh, they have auto dimming uh, on when you uh, go to watch a movie. Um, also, I seem to have to recalibrate my eyes like every other time that I put these on. Otherwise, like where I look doesn't accurately get picked up all the time. Uh, but yeah, when you're watching a movie, auto dimming is on. So it dims your environment and that gives the perception that uh, brightness is on the screen is better. But um, when I'm editing in Lightroom here, I can already tell you I prefer the brightness to be uh, much, much, much brighter than what it has. The nits or, or brightness of the OLED displays that they have in here are just not quite up to par uh, with where they will be eventually. And it's something that they uh, increasingly get better at. Um, just looking through this wedding, showing you these are all just edits I, that I have not adjusted since editing uh, right here on the uh, Apple Vision Pro. If you're a patron, you can go to my Patreon and actually look at this full gallery. It's been a while since I've shared a full client gallery uh, for people to review. And this is about a thousand photos um, across a day of shooting in St. Croix, which is a really beautiful, amazing wedding. I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit here. The contrast and, and color saturation isn't quite as, as good as the liquid display of the MacBook Pro, but that's sort of to be expected, but it's still good enough to do editing well enough that uh, everybody looks good and I don't have to make serious adjustments after the fact. But there are two reasons I'm very excited that uh, I'm able to edit with color and exposure accuracy in in the Apple Vision Pro. One is that I can edit outside. I can actually go outside and the intensity of the sun isn't gonna wash out my display and you know, lose contrast and have a ton of glare. That's amazing reason number one. I can't wait for the summer when it's actually warm enough to spend a meaningful amount of time outside. That might sound counterintuitive because I'm, I'm wearing a Vision headset while being outside, but to me, that's better than not going outside at all because I'm strapped to my laptop needing you know, an inside room to actually see what I'm doing. Um, number two is that color accuracy and exposure adjustments are high, you, your brain is highly sensitive to your ambient light and surroundings. Uh, oftentimes I edit in Lightroom with the lights out mode at 50%, so it looks like this, where it's like partially dark. And that's so my brain is just hyper tuned into the accuracy of the colors and the exposure of the, the frame that I'm looking at instead of being distracted by, you know, uh, colors in the camera roll or colors in the rest of uh, the Lightroom feed. I'm hoping, and if this is a feature I haven't come across it yet, I'm hoping you there's gonna be an ability to dim your, your wider surroundings. Let's see if I can do that here. Whoa, I'm getting some double vision. There we go. Yeah, I mean, I can edit on the moon or something like that, but it'd be nice to be able to dim my uh, actual surroundings while I'm using, it looks like it does dim a little bit, uh, which is nice, but I would like it to go even darker than that or just have the control. Again, a lot of these issues and nitpicking things I, I have that can be uh, solved in um, actual software, which is a which is a great thing to see. Uh, I'm just gonna fly through the rest of these photos and try and get to some of the nighttime stuff. Let's see, this is the ceremony getting ready to start. 
Um, the dynamic range of the Apple Vision Pro seems pretty good. Uh, it does lose some of the highlights a little earlier than the liquid uh, you know, display on my MacBook does. So you have to kind of be mindful of that and maybe lean into the, the histogram a little bit more uh, than you know, I would otherwise prefer. Yeah, overall, um, I'm able to make really you know, clinical dynamic range judgments um, just using Apple Vision Pro, which honestly I didn't expect to be able to do that. I thought for sure with some of these more like really, really dynamic scenes where the original photo, the couple is probably more like a silhouette. I was able to edit that into being, you know, uh, more true to life uh, exposure the way that I would want. Um, the last thing I want to talk about as we just kind of wrap up the rest of the wedding here is the latency. It feels nearly real time. It's got to be the best that I've experienced. And I've used uh, as early on as like the alpha or beta version of an, an app called Immersed VR um, with the Quest. And that app would allow you to create multiple displays. It might still be the only one that lets you share your Mac display uh, with a Quest headset. Um, obviously, Apple has a huge edge being first party and not having and being able to compensate for you know wireless latency in a way that I don't even detect it. It seems basically imperceptible. Sometimes I still get issues with, with the keyboard and mouse not sharing. It's supposed to. It says link to Mac or iPad. Allow your pointer, blah, 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 to be able to move to a screen nearby. Oop, kind of, nope. Yeah, it's supposed to just go through this display and let me control other apps. Let's see if I can get it going this way. There we go. So it is working uh, when I pull up the app display and I can use my trackpad and mouse uh, to, you know, browse Safari or something like that while also having my uh, <clears throat> Lightroom screen up, which is really, really great. I mean, that is a wonderful experience, uh, assuming the connection doesn't drop out and, and, and the pass through uh, from one display to the other is, is seamless. I uh, highly recommend using it in that way. Let's see, I can't pass through to adjust where the screen is though. That's kind of weird. I'm going to leave it at that so I don't get too bad of uh, marks on my face, but I have decided to keep this. I did not expect to be saying that at this point. Again, the utility of being able to have a very controlled ambient light and exposure experience and uh, be able to edit outdoors in the future is enough of a compelling experience for me that uh, I'm gonna hang on to these. Also, the movie watching is amazing. Uh, I have, I'm not getting the headaches as much anymore. And you know, I probably need to limit it to like one movie a day. But that's it, I'm gonna end this there because there's more than enough opinions about how Apple Vision Pro works for other people in their life. If you have any questions at all, especially if you're a photographer and how this may or may not work in your workflow, uh, please let me know. And as always, thank you so much for your attention. Bye everyone.